Sony Quadcopter 101 here, and I have a neat quadcopter for review for today. This is the Simto, Sim2, S-I-M-T-O-O, -O, Dragonfly Pro. Now, the Dragonfly, Sim2 Dragonfly came out about a year ago, the original version of this. Um, but since then, it has been retooled, uh, re-updated quite a bit. Not quite a bit, but there has been some modifications done to it. Primarily with the camera and with the controlling watch that goes with this. Now the Sim2 is a foldable quadcopter as you can see here with legs that remove very easily and this um, gimbal and camera also removes very easily with the idea being that you can package all of this within this little carry case that comes with it. This little carrying case can fit all this. The blades come off very easily and you package it all up. It takes about 10 minutes to set up. It takes about 10 minutes to uh, break apart. Now, I'm not going to do that today because there are vi uh, many videos of the original Sim2 already available on YouTube showing how to um, put this together and take it apart. Hold on, folks. I want to put that leg back in there again. But uh, if you want to look, you know, look up Sim2 Dragonfly and you'll find, you'll see how easy it is to set this up and take it apart. I want to demonstrate its new features. Uh, the original Sim2 Dragonfly uh, came with a watch. A G it wasn't a GPS watch. It was a control watch that would uh, control via 2.4 gigahertz, control the quadcopter. But it also had a GPS, um, another watch that you'd have to strap to your arm. So you did, in fact, had two watches. One for GPS follow, but you'd use this one. And the other watch for controlling the quadcopter. Since last year, Sim2 has redesigned the system to put the GPS and the control features all in one watch. The other watch had a, a dial that you would twist to control it. Now you have a little joystick to control the quadcopter and multiple buttons for controlling the various features of the quadcopter. Um, first off, let's go off over these features. Uh, this is the on-off button here to turn on this transmitter to get it going. Um, this is the rotate key to rotate the quadcopter or also if you hold it down, it'll do um, 360 degree uh, rotate about your position. Uh, it held, the quadcopter also has follow me feature since the GPS is now built into the watch. No separate GPS system anymore. It's built into the watch. So you press this button here and the quadcopter will follow you. Um, to make the quadcopter take off, you press this button here. To tell the quadcopter to land, you press this button here. To increase altitude, you press this button here. And to decrease altitude, you press this button here. And in any of those features, if it's rotating or climbing or descending, you press this button here and that will tell it the quadcopter to uh, stop. Um, this button also tells it, uh, a quick press of this button also arms the quadcopter. I think, actually, I believe it's two second press. Arms the quadcopter and gets the quadcopter's motor spinning. So in effect, that is the watch's features. Um, it also has a uh, return to home and landing, which you activate by pressing and holding this button down for three seconds. So now this quadcopter also has a controller, as you can see here. Uh, you can, uh, this used to be an option. You'd have to pay last year, you had to pay an extra hundred dollars to get this controller. It now comes included with the quadcopter in the package. And this provides control ranges up to the, the predict 800 meters. Now I find that kind of far and kind of hard to believe and uh, really realistically here in the USA I should not be flying 800 meters because that would be directly out of line of sight uh, but uh, I'll demonstrate this in a future flight today I want to focus on this watch and uh, future flight I'll take the quadcopter up in the canyons there and demonstrate uh, aerial photography around the canyons using uh, this controller here now notice I have a smartphone attached to this uh, quadcopter. Uh, you do can get FPV from the quadcopter's camera. The FPV though is 5.8 gigahertz. The old version was 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, for this updated version, no, it's no longer 2.4 gigahertz. You need to have a 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi capable phone. Unfortunately, the phone that I had it was 5.8 gigahertz. This is my B5, and that died on me recently. <laughs> and this is my old HomTom phone. So. Uh, I'm not able to bind with this quadcopter. I'm just including this to show you that it does have FPV capability. We're going to be flying it without FPV today using the watch. So um, let's go. One more thing I want to talk about, or a couple more things. I haven't gone over the quadcopter yet. <laughs> Details of the quadcopter. Uh, this is your camera. It is a 4K camera, 4K capable camera. Um, 
but to use 4k you need to get an ultra 3 U3 card, ultra high speed card. Uh, those are, I, I don't have one of those. And another thing is, since this is going up on YouTube, uh, 4K video is just not an option for me in, on YouTube. It takes too long for me to upload my videos. And also a lot of people will have a hard time viewing 4K and downloading them. So what, I'm going, what I've done is I've taken the camera and I've uh, reset its uh, camera to 1080p, 30 frames per second for YouTube uh, video purposes. So we're going to fly this with YouTube. Um, primarily this camera is controlled via the app that I was just talking about, but you can turn on the camera before you turn on the quadcopter and you will have control of the camera to be able to use it manually. Now notice this gimbal that it's on. It is a three axis gimbal, full three axis gimbal. So that is pretty nifty in itself. So you've got three axis stabilization, uh, three axis control. Uh, you can turn the camera right or left and you can tilt the camera up or down. The battery is a proprietary battery, unfortunately. Uh, if you pull it out, it's 5,400 milliamp per hour. Uh, let me wiggle it out of its box here to show you the battery. But it's 5,400 milliamp per hour, 11.1 .1 volt battery. It does have an XT connector here, and it does have a balance plug connector here, which suggests that you could possibly balance or charge this through a balance charger your own balance charger instead of using the provided proprietary one. Okay, I've got the battery on there. Let's go for a flight of these um, Simto Dragonfly and see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. Let's get it set up first. Okay, let's go over the startup of this quadcopter. Since I am not going to be using Wi-Fi FPV, I'm gonna turn on the camera first. And that's the first thing you wanna do because if you turn on the quadcopter, um, it's going to be looking, without turning on the camera first, it is going to be looking for the um, your signal from your camera to make a connection to your, uh, not your camera, your phone. So if I start it separately, it enables you to actually control the camera manually like I'm about to do here. And the next thing we need to do is we need to unfold the blades. And the back ones get unfolded first, then the front one second. And I didn't show you this, they lock into place with this little silver ball down here that holds the blades in place. So all four blades are open. And the next thing we do is turn on the quadcopter by holding down this button in the back, the power button. And we wait a few seconds until we hear the ESCs. And then we're gonna turn on the this transmitter here by pressing this button here on the left and holding it down. Okay, after we turn on the quad cutter, we're gonna wait a few minutes, and I did wait a few minutes already to check the satellites. Right now I got 16 satellites on the quad cutter, but I'm going to wait until I get a sufficient number of satellites on my uh, watch. Right now I got uh, one. No, I'm taking that back, I got 11. I got sufficient <laughs> to fly now, so we're good for both follow, follow me and also for uh, um, controlling the quadcopter. So we have GPS signal and right now I'm going to check my uh, Actually, I must start recording too since we uh, have this initialized and ready to go I'm just going to press the record button there manually and I'm going to remember to turn off the recording when we land And now I'm going to adjust my gimbal to the left by holding this button down here and we're going to take off uh, and to take off this quadcopter uh, we got to start to arm the motors first, and I do that by pressing this button here, and letting go, and then tell it to take off by pressing this button here. And let me pull up my pants. <laughs> I should be in the picture. Okay, the first thing I want to try is rotate mode. We're going to press this button here to rotate the quadcopter. And it's doing a 360 degree rotate. Let's raise up that camera actually for the rotate. Is it pointing down? It's pointing down. It's pointed all the way up. Doing a 360 degree rotate. And at the same time, let's climb. Pressing the, the climb button. Ascend button. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a takeoff button I pressed. This is the ascend button, that one there. Now it's going to go up. 
Let me check the uh, battery voltage while we're at it. We're doing good. And I'm going to say that altitude's sufficient. I'll press the hold button now. Okay. And that's how you climb and pick an altitude. You press the hold button, and now I want to descend. I'm going to press the descend button. Bring it back down. And when it reaches an altitude that I like, I'm going to press this hold button one more time as it's descending here. Yeah, it's coming down, it's coming down. Actually, I believe it stops automatically at five meters. Let's see if it'll go all the way to the ground. At least that's what I read in the directions. And I don't think that's true. So we're gonna stop it right about there. <laughs> okay, looking at the gimbal again. I wanna point it to the left a bit. And pull that button down. Oops, I hit the send again, stop it there. I gotta hold this button down for about three seconds. Come on. Oh, I guess I'm going all the way over. How about if I hold this button? There we go, that's the direction I wanted to go. And adjusting it one more time. Yeah, I keep overshooting this gimbal. <laughs> right, that's good enough for government work, as my dad would say. <laughs> now let's lower that gimbal. Point it down. And the reason I want to do that now, we're going to do a rotate, and I'm going to climb a bit too. I don't feel comfortable at that position right there. We're going to climb it up to about there. A step back. I should be in the picture. And we're going to hit the rotate button and hold it down for three seconds until it starts rotating. And it's going to do a rotate about position. So. <laughs> so there's its rotate mode. <laughs> Now supposedly, you can move it on and in by moving right and left on the stick, but I wasn't able to do that with mine. Uh, I can't seem to make the uh, rotation uh, direction further out. Let's stop that rotate now. Now the next thing we're going to do is come back down again, hitting the uh, descend button, bring it down lower, stop it about there. I'm going to adjust the camera directly downward. And the reason I'm going to do that is looking straight down like that. Straight down at me. And also I'm going to climb a bit. And stepping away from the quadcopter to about an altitude of there. And I'm going to move over here. I'm going to show you what this does with follow me. Uh, follow me I'm not entirely thrilled with <laughs> because you'll see what it does. But let's hit follow me. Now watch the quadcopter. It's, it sort of takes position directly overhead for follow me. So you see me up there. Um, I don't feel entirely comfortable with that quadcopter directly overhead, but let's take a walk and see how it performs. Actually, let's take a small jog. <laughs> And if you stop, it comes right overhead and plops itself down. Let's go in the exact opposite direction from it. It turns around and attempts to follow you. So let's run, run around the area. Let's don't follow me. <laughs> so that's follow me, folks. It, it attempts to follow you. Now, the problem I got with follow me is if you're going up and down a hill, particularly if you're going up a hill, that doesn't know that you're climbing and it's going to maintain the altitude and eventually that quadcopter is going to be at the same altitude as you. You two might come together. My dog's barking. Let's go back over my hair. <laughs> so, in that case, you know, uh, there is some safety concern about this. You gotta be aware of it. That when in follow me mode, it might become an issue. Let's see if this will climb 
while in follow me mode. I'm gonna press the climb button. Pressing the climb button. No, it doesn't go up any higher. It just stays right above me. So I'm gonna turn off follow me. Or actually gonna hit hover again, I believe. And that holds it right there. So now I can step away from it and it's no longer following me. Let's bring it back down again. For another thing I want to show, demonstrate. Let's bring it right down to almost level with us. Right about there. And adjusting the camera up again. And this time, well, that's too far up. Let me point it down a bit. This time I want to demonstrate control via the joystick. You do have control, but it's, let's take in this case, backward flying for panning. You can pan to the left, pan, <laughs> pan left, back. In effect, you know, you have right, left, forward, back control. Now, if you want to turn it, let's bring it back toward me. And to the right. There's no diagonal, folks. You've got to be forward, backward, full right, full right, left. Okay. Now, let's say we want to change the camera and point it toward the mountains over there. We have to hit this rotate button. And when it's pointing at the mountains, then we got to hit stop. Okay, pointing at the mountains. <laughs> the mountains off of that direction. Now, <laughs> we have a view of the mountains. Now, let's climb a bit. How much battery to power? I got good battery power still left. Let's climb up a bit. Hitting climb button. Sending it back up. Going up, up, up. Now this will climb to 40 meters automatically. I'm not gonna go that high though. Again, the watch's range is only about to 50 meters. Now let's go push forward, head toward the mountains. Stop it right about there. And point the camera back down at me again. My rotating upward means pointing it down. And hitting follow me again. And let's see if it, I'm going to start running away from it. Let's see how long it takes to catch up to me. <laughs> it comes right overhead again. <laughs> yeah, that's the one feature I wish they, that you could put a standoff distance between you you and the quadcopter. You're not pointing it right overhead. Yeah, that kind of uh, scares me. But hitting hover again to stop it. And stepping away and doing a, you know what we haven't done yet? Let's do a uh, return to home. Let's hold this button down and demonstrate a return to home landing. It will do it. If it loses signal from the watch, it will return to home and land, or you can dem you can tell it to do such by holding the button down for uh, this button, the descent, or the landing button down for three seconds. And it will initiate the return to home landing. And depending on how stable it is, will depend whether I let it go all the way to the ground. <laughs> well, that was, now we got a wind. That was a relatively stable landing. Um, but keep in mind, you notice I was doing a lot of rotates, rotations of this quadcopter. Um, using this rotate key and the reason I'm doing that is if you you know as this is similar to uh, uh, what is that quadcopter that does? <laughs> there are some quadcopters out there that to uh, calibrate their uh, not gyros their compasses you need to rotate them manually rotate them in the air um, by just doing yaw turns and that will calibrate this compass. And this is one of those quadcopters that work that way. So keeping that in mind, folks, I think I'm about half battery. 
I'm going to fly it until we can't fly anymore. So setting it back up again, holding the button down here. Oh, 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 I entered menus. Hold on, folks. i got to exit this menu. Okay, holding the button down and telling it to take off. And there we go, taking off again. And now I want to just try play around with panning. <laughs> We're going to sit, pull the quadcopter, or let me lower the, the camera down, point it at me. Right overhead, and telling it to ascend. Oh, wait a minute. Ascend. <laughs> Up it goes. <laughs> Pretty neat. So, the whole idea again of this quadcopter is to have something that's easy to carry with you. You know, you put it in a pouch and uh, take it with you. And this one can do that, hitting the stop button. Now, telling it to descend. Coming back down again. Okay, and it's low back. We're going to do an automatic landing again. Return to home landing. And raising the camera up this time. For its return to home landing. We are at low battery now. My watch is telling me that, warning me that. You know, the low battery on this comes in quite a bit early. Um, when I took this quadcopter home uh, after its first test flight, I measured the remaining battery power in it, and it was about 3.8 volts. Uh, so, you know, it kind of lands kind of early, in my opinion. But keep that in mind. You could probably get a little more flight time out of it uh, before actually doing a landing, but I'd like to be safe. So let me turn off the quadcopter, make sure it is off. But it is showing one bar battery power, so, you know, maybe it was right maybe it was wrong so and stopping the I hope that camera recorded before I turned off that quadcopter or before I turned that camera off I'm not sure it did dang it anyways that was a flight the first flight second flight actually of the sim 2 uh, dragonfly pro hope you enjoyed it it's